Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. We're done, we're done with the build on the Schumacher Storm ST. So this is a brand new 110 scale electric two wheel drive race stadium truck uh, from Schumacher over there in the UK. And uh, it's the first stadium truck they've had in about 25 years. So this is really, really exciting. Curious to see how it drives, but before you can drive it, first you gotta build it, of course. Now I picked mine up from discountrcstore.com. Definitely the best place online to pick up Schumacher stuff. Best inventory, best selection, best prices. Fast free shipping on orders $50 or higher. And uh, but just a good group of good people over there and a really easy to use website as well. So uh, here's what the body looks like. I'm running kind of this new color scheme, red into white fade. I'm not too sure on how well it turned out my first time trying a fade job, but we'll see how that goes. Um, popping that off, we'll kind of take a look at what we got installed in the vehicle. Uh, electronics wise, I'm running the Savax 1258TG Black Edition. Uh, good servo overall, not too expensive. Hobbywing XR10 Pro stock spec ESC. So it's like an 80 amp ESC, meant for stock spec, but you can also run it with turbo and uh, boost and all that stuff. Sandwall RX462 receiver. So that's paired to my Samuel MT4S. I'm running a uh, Gen Z 6000 milliamp hour Redline lithium high voltage battery. So definitely a nice battery. Uh, definitely check them out. I'll put down a link in the description below. And motor wise, I'm running a Team Powers Actinium V3 13 and a half turn motor. So this is set up as like a spec vehicle here in the United States. 13.5 uh, is what people run stadium truck. And as you can see, it is a carpet vehicle. So Schumachers, for the most part, uh, are optimized for artificial surfaces, AstroTurf, uh, carpet, um, but you can also run them on dirt as well, of course. We'll kind of walk through the vehicle. Overall, the build went pretty well. Uh, there was one little issue I had, but I'll kind of talk about that. Uh, but this is what it looks like from the front end. You got the S2 sort of a uh, fiberglass composite type material or Kevlar. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, aluminum shocks front and rear. Now I did add the aluminum shock caps, not really necessary, but I had to set these lying around. And the only thing you'll want to watch out for if you run aluminum shock caps is that they are one millimeter shorter than the plastic ones. So you will definitely want to like lengthen your shock shaft by one millimeter to get the same amount of droop. You will also need the shock standoffs and some uh, plastic bushings. And on the rear end, I'm actually running a TLR titanium shock standoffs because I had a set of these lying around and uh, you kind of need them to space these out enough from the shock tower. The, the stock sort of steel ones uh, won't space quite correctly if you're only aluminum shock caps. If you run the just standard ball studs, they are totally fine with the plastic shock caps. Uh, other option parts I'm running is the brass uh, servo weight, the brass ESC uh, tray, and I think that's pretty much it. Let's see if I remember anything else, but I think that's pretty much it. Here's what it looks like from the front end. Um, pretty much the same design as the Cougar Laydown. Actually has the same chassis, same chassis as the regular Cougar Laydown. They do make a minus five chassis that most people run, but this is kind of like the full length chassis. Uh, really long flat arms, as you can see. I was a little surprised they don't have the gold wing arms like a lot of vehicles have nowadays. Kind of old school style, but maybe a little bit better on the rough stuff or the lower traction type surfaces. They did update the hubs and spindles on the truck. So these are new carriers, new spindles. They're just beefed up. They'll have a little more material. This is one part some people would break on the Cougar Laydown. I never really broke mine, although I did eventually just go to Loom just for the heck of it. They do have two different bearings in the spindle. So a larger size on the outside and a smaller one on the inside. So that was the one issue I had with my belt. Mine basically had two small ones. Uh, I think they're four by eight by three, but I was missing the five by nine by threes that are needed on the outside. So contact the Schumacher, they sent some out to me. Um, I also went by the local hobby store to pick some up because they had some stock so I could just continue my build. But um, yeah, really the only issue I had, I do like how they have little nuts capturing the axles rather than like a screw or whatever that can fall out. So you don't have to lock tight this or anything. So nice to see. Uh, they are running captured ball cups on the front end. So these turnbuckles are a little skinnier than uh, the modern stuff. Most stuff's about three and a half millimeters. These look like maybe three millimeters or one eighth or something like that. I don't know, pretty small ball cup or uh, turnbuckles in general, but I haven't bent any of these yet, but uh, curious to see if that will hold up durability wise. On the steering links, they use regular ball cups with easy access screws so you can unthread those little ball cups. That's pretty nice. Um, one thing I didn't quite like is 
On these sort of larger ball cups they have for the turnbuckles, they are sort of like a two-piece design. They got like a set screw and then just a steel ball that you thread onto them. Um, maybe you might want to consider swapping these out for Team Associated single piece ones. Not really sure why they had that. Other things to watch for are to make sure these are free because they really only kind of rotate in one direction. And then these uh, little turn, captured turnbuckles can be a little confusing. There's actually one steel washer here that is part of the turnbuckle. It's not considered part of the uh, spacers or anything. And then there's two gray aluminum ones, but they all look pretty much exactly the same. You just wanna make sure you got the steel one up top, up against the turnbuckle. That's what holds it in. Um, so that is a common mistake a lot of people make. They do have front sway bars. Uh, seem to kind of keep the front end a little more uh, neutral. Uh, not quite so much roll. Um, and then steering rack wise, I am actually running the aluminum Ackerman bar. Not really necessary, but um, you know, that's what they had in the setup I'm running. So I picked, a, picked up the Jorn Neumann uh, EOS carpet setup because I'm running on carpet. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, he was running that and I had a set lying around. So I was like, okay, what the heck, I'll throw mine on. Also running the Aero X Turbo. Uh, horn here, so definitely pick up an aluminum one. Aero X is the one you want to buy, it just fits nicely, and you want to mount it to that bottom hole there. Um, yeah, the front end, yeah, pretty much all the same. I like how they have kind of these aluminum little washers here that hold on the, the screws a little bit better, mount them up a little more secure. Um, I am running the actual antenna tube, just make sure you cut it down below the shock tire so that you know if you land upside down and the body caves in, you don't actually bend that little antenna tube. So just cut trim it down a little bit. Um, running the forward battery mount position uh, with the Gen's Ace Redline battery. We'll see how that goes. I'm running the stock plastic thumb screws. I know on my other vehicles, I didn't really like them very much. I was run I'm running aluminum ones on my other vehicles. Running plastic for now, we'll see how that goes, but maybe an, an option part you want to consider. On the rear end, it is laid down, has this really nice like drilled out slipper plate. Pretty cool to see. Has a couple shims in there, so make sure you build it correctly. Um, but yeah, nice uh, little transmission overall. Although this lay shaft or top shaft is actually steel. So I was surprised about that. Most of them are aluminum nowadays. They do make a titanium one that drops probably five, six grams of rotating mass. I think I'm gonna pick that up because yeah, this steel top shaft is pretty crazy heavy. I was a little surprised about that. They do have a nice machine, machined idler gear, so that was one issue with the Cougar laydown people had. Uh, that little plastic composite one would sometimes break, so they do include the nice um, machined Delrin white piece, so uh, that is an upgrade over the Cougar. And then the gear diff is pretty much the same as the Cougar laydown, just to seal the gear differential. Not really the best design, in my opinion. It's kind of like all plastic and uh, tends to leak a little bit in my opinion, but um, yeah, that is in there. Rear end is pretty cool. A couple different options with this D block. You can flip it upside down if you want like the low roll center or if you run it high pin or high roll center basically is what it's called. Uh, then you want the Schumacher label facing up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how it looks. Rear end, flat arms. A couple other tips. Um, on the C block, they have these little inserts to set your toe. Make sure those arrows point inward. Uh, from the picture, it looks like it's pointing outward. It says to mount them inward, but the picture says outward. So that was a little confusing. You do want to make sure those lines point inward on those C blocks to set your toe. Otherwise, your toe will be backwards. Um, yeah, other than that. Oh, yeah, the last thing on these little hinge pins here, these bronze pins on the outside. They do have a little flat spot. Make sure you match that up to the arms. Flat shot spot should be on the inside of that little hinge pin because uh, if you try to slide it in without orienting that correctly, then it'll kind of jam up and you'll wonder why it's not going through and all that. So, uh, yeah, definitely double check that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, I like uh, these little bronze CVAs. They're already pre-built for you. Just got to grease them a little bit. Uh, out drives and stuff, we're fine. No real issues. I'm running carpet tires, so these are Pro-Line. Uh, I think they're wedges up front and prisms in the rear. My local track is carpet, which is part of the reason I'm running Schumacher now. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that runs. It does come with wheels. They are compatible with Team Associated wheels. In case you ever want to uh, pick up another set of wheels, uh, they seem pretty, fl pretty flexible. Uh, little, my AE wheels or associate wheels are a little bit stiffer, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, not a big fan of these little shock cups, but whatever. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then last thing is these body posts are like super, super long. They're like six inches long. Trim them down to wherever you want. I'm running the bottom pin position with the three dot um, 
little mounts here. So there are two different or three different sizes of mounts uh, for different heights, but running them all the way down with the three dot. And then I'm also had to cut out the body a little bit here on this uh, arch well, wheel well, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was kind of rubbing up against the spring in that low position. Um, yeah, and that, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. So I'm gonna hopefully get a chance to drive this pretty soon and give you my thoughts and hopefully some running footage footage as well. Uh, definitely stay tuned for more videos on this pretty cool stadium truck from Schumacher. Uh, definitely hit the like, share, subscribe button. Uh, look for more videos soon and thanks for watching.